questions are there for the position of chair. How has this interim structure performed in uniting the party in the Free State after the suspension of Ace Mahashule? No, very difficult. And, and you should also understand where this comes from. You got a former premier, a chairperson of an organization, coming secretary general being suspended, very strong supporters in the free state. So the ANC is divided into two groupings. And it seems as if no matter how rational the issues are being that are being tabled by one grouping, they are just being dismissed. And that is why we've also seen that service delivery at the Metropolitan. Uh, municipality, Mangaum municipality has just disintegrated. I mean, I am privy to this. I live in Bloemfontein. It is chaotic. You can't even want to mention Mangawu within the same sentence as a metropolitan municipality because it's pathetic. They can't even collect refuse on a weekly basis. So the, 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 the council has disintegrated. But that is also a result of that leadership that has been too powerful. And when that leadership disintegrated, the two factions could not unite. I can't see that the ANC will even emerge united after their national elective conference if they've got things like this happening in one of the strong uh, provinces. Because if you look at all the elector uh, elections outcome, you will see that the ANC in the past in the free state at much what was only second and third after the Eastern Cape and KwaZulu Natal in terms of electoral support. But that also uh, definitely uh, will have a huge dent if this is continuing in the free state. Yeah, and it's, it's a, it, it really is a big worry. Uh, I mean, we know that the, the issues were reported to um, the ANC's acting SG Paul Mashatile, who appointed a task team to investigate this. So what are the interventions that have happened since this investigation started? Yeah, a very good question, Leanne, and perhaps I can throw the question back. What interventions have happened since there has been uh, also a new management taking over the municipality? That is exactly the problem of the African economic government. They will send delegates from the Tule House, but those delegates themselves are conflicted. And instead of uh, assisting, the, you know, sorting out the mess, they are actually fueling uh, the fire that is already burning. We've seen in North Northwest and many other provinces that where there has been intervention from the Tule House. The problems just does not get resolved. Uh, and just very briefly, I strongly believe that if you've got a strong secret secretariat, uh, these issues will not have reached the public domain because in the past, the center held and the ANC used to manage their issues behind the scenes. But these days, because it seems as if everybody wants it, it, it in power, uh, this whole issue of accountability is just a no, it's just a farce. And that is why people are just acting the way they're acting, and at the end of the day, they are definitely harming uh, what I would still re refer to as a glorious organization in the African continent. Yeah, uh, but th there is still this provincial conference that's, uh, that's supposed to happen. I mean, it's meant to be, I think it's on the 2nd of December. Um, what should be expected from that conference with the very little time that's left at the rate things are going? No, we should not be surprised if there's another interdict, uh, because my question is if you've got these issues with your regional conferences, uh, disgruntled members, and, and perhaps very briefly I need to give a context, and, and this is public knowledge, that too many ANC leaders are facing almost like the end of their political careers, and or some of them are facing jail. Uh, and, and, and once you've got a situation like that, they will do everything to try and create a chaotic situation. So I will not be surprised. It has never happened on the eve of a national elective conference that just two weeks before you still battle to hold a provincial elective conference. And that, for me, just is indicative of how this more than a century old organization battled to deal with basic issues, and that is organizational renewal and organizational discipline. I mean, we, we know that, that, that history has shown us there's been unpredictability around the time 
of the elections in the Free State in recent years. I mean, which results in disputes and litigations, and some are actually attributing this to Ace Makhishule, who has been at the helm of the provincial chairpersonship for many, many years in that province. What do you think of this view? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very unfortunate. I had the privilege of meeting some of the interim provincial committee leaders. And, and you could see uh, the pressure that they are under. And one question that was posed to them is that, but why have you been battling to try and unite? And they say they've been trying on numerous occasions. And even after this court pronouncement judgment, they will still try to reach out, extend an end to the other disgruntled groupings. But one cannot also, uh, you know, uh, undermine or actually uh, isolate the role that uh, the former leader, the, I mean, Ace Mahashule still have in, in the brief state, even if he himself does not meet with some of these disgruntled members, but they will want to advance uh, uh, the agenda of the so-called RET grouping within the African National Congress. But it is the citizens of this province, it is the citizens of this city because it's the regional conference of Mangahung who are bearing the brunt of all these uh, infighting within the African National Congress because service delivery is non existent in Mangahung. Yeah, and, and that seems to be a chorus that a lot of municipalities are singing right now with, when it comes to service delivery, and it's a great worry with all the internal grappling and fighting that's taking place. And I mean, it's not only at the municipal level, you know, that we look up at the national level and the, the, we, we see the ANC grappling with, with grade divisions within the party. I mean, one of the contenders, Lindiwe Sisulu, we, we didn't see, obviously her name didn't make it up to the top, but they say, um, you know, didn't make it into the top six, but apparently she wrote to the NC Electoral Committee Chair, Halema McClante, saying that she was robbed in the outcomes of the nominations. McClante has since said that she must prove it. But it's, it's only about 18 days to go before the ANC's 2022 elective conference. Will the ANC's National Dispute Resolution Committee be able to deal with these issues at this late stage? No, they, they should be. But, uh, I mean, if you look at the, the ANC in the past, normally what I would say, we will, we will deal with these issues. Uh, but at the end of the day, they will go to uh, the elective conference and then retrospectively uh, attempt to deal with that. That That is the ANC that I know. Uh, but I also wrote an opinion piece uh, three weeks ago about the issue of gender equality. And I strongly believe that people like the minister have been uh, you know, settling the wrong horse because they are fighting or using the same approach that this male-dominated leadership of the African National Congress have been used to, and that is to lambast their opponents. The women within the African National Congress should make a stand, a point to say, we are not going to allow a situation where you've got a, a president who are being a, a nominee for a president position being a male without a, a woman uh, being be nominated for the deputy president. And it's only then that we will see this gender imbalance, but also generational mix uh, happening within uh, the nominations and the election of the African National Congress. Other than that, uh, people like Lindwe Sisulu and Kosozana Zuma will forever try uh, to make inroads, but it will be a huge battle. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. and. Uh Keep watching and talking and seeing what happens come this uh, elective conference and, you know, all the different decisions that are made in the run-up to it. And uh, political analyst Professor Seth Olejo Matabisi talking to us more about what's happening in the Free State. He, of course, is a senior lecturer at the University of the Free State discussing the Mangaung elective conference saga and the broader ANC challenges ahead of that conference.